Hello, friend. I want to take a moment and share with you about something that is incredibly powerful, something that you can actually implement today, now, tomorrow. And uh, it doesn't just work for one person and not work for another. It'll work for everyone. I want to talk to you for a moment about the power of praise. Praise is the ordained strength of God. In Psalm 8 and verse 2, the psalmist said, Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Now, Jesus actually quoted this verse in Matthew chapter 21, verse 16. And not only did he quote the verse, Jesus interpreted the verse. And he's allowed to do that because he is the living word of God. This says out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you've ordained strength. But when Jesus quoted it, it said out of the mouth of babes, you have perfected praise. And it had to do with an all of the little children were, were worshiping and singing their hosannas. My friend, praise is the ordained strength of God. It brings the strength of God on the scene. And it says that when we do that, when the strength of God comes on the scene, it silences the enemy and the avenger. And that word silence, it does mean to make quiet. And some of you know, you know, when the enemy is talking to your head, you know, all these thoughts, doubts, and fears, and, you know, trying to get you to, you know, cascade into some sort of depression. Well, praise will bring the strength of God, the ordained strength of God into your environment and it will silence the enemy. But that word silence, it doesn't mean to just make quiet. It also means to cause to be still and to desist from activity. It will stop the devil in his tracks. You remember when King Saul in the Old Testament turned away from God and continued on in his sin and rebellion, the Spirit of the Lord left him And an evil spirit would come and plague him. That is, until David would play on his harp and worship. David, who wrote the majority of the Psalms, when David would play his instrument and minister to the Lord, that evil spirit would go from Saul and he would be refreshed. My friend, Psalm 22, the Bible says this, that God inhabits the praises of his people. Literally, God inhabits the singing praises of his people. God is enthroned, his presence, his strength comes down, fills the atmosphere when we praise him. And I know some of you that are watching me right now, you you have battled with depression for some time. Others, just because of the onslaught of negativity in the media, um, be that, you know, the news media or, you know, social media. I mean, 90% of what's reported is negative and a whole lot of it's not true. But you begin to feed on those things and it will affect your mind. And some of you that never grappled with depression are finding yourself grappling with it. You know, fears are uh, uh, assaulting your mind and the enemy's having a heyday with you. Well, the way, way to make him cease is to begin to praise God, worship God. It brings his presence on the scene. And my friend, when the presence of God fills your atmosphere, the bad things have to leave that atmosphere. And I'm telling you, this is a word from God for some of you right now. You need to spend some time worshiping God. And it's it's easy when the band is playing and there's a multitude of voices around you. Not so easy, you know, when, when the clouds are dark and threatening, the lightning is flashing and there's not another voice to echo your praise. And you just by yourself lift your hands and you begin to worship God God will inhabit that praise, and I want to encourage you to do it. I have an acquaintance that was overseas ministering, you know, given his life for the Lord, and he would go into some very dangerous regions of the world to share the gospel, and his life is one filled with extraordinary, you know, occurrences and, and, you know, just literally heroic efforts to bring the gospel to some of the darkest places in the earth spiritually. Well, he was away overseas and he got a call. He's actually ministering for the Lord and he gets a call and they inform him that his wife has been killed in an automobile accident. 
Well, he immediately flew home and had the funeral, and he went into a tailspin. He just didn't know how to climb out of it. This dark, deep depression seized his mind, and he was just, you know, he was just felt like he was being flattened by this unseen dark force. And he was counseling with an older minister that happened to be a personal friend of mine. And the older minister told him, you're not going to like what I have to tell you, but you need to worship God. And he said it was the last thing I felt like doing, but he did it anyway. And there alone, it was either in his apartment or his home. He lifted his hands and began to worship God And the darkness did not abate. It just seemed to grow even darker, but he continued to worship 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I think it was 20 minutes or maybe even a half an hour in. Suddenly, the atmosphere broke. Those chains broke off of his mind. That darkness fled from him. Tears began to stream down his face as the presence of God brought comfort and liberty and freedom to his mind, literally filled his soul with joy. And he was changed that day. And he actually brings a message when he goes around the world and preaches still about that. And he's written a book about it as well. Just just powerful. The, The purpose and the power of praise. Out of the mouth of babes, you don't have to know a lot and you can still praise. God has ordained strength, or as Jesus put it, he has perfected praise. So friend, put it into action. Start praising God today. And watch the atmosphere around you, in your home, where you are. Watch it change.